right, well, tonight we uh, get to uh, study once again from Firm Foundations, Creation to Christ, uh, this book which has been used on many mission fields to introduce people to the God of the Bible and the plan that he has for them. And uh, these are really some basic studies that all of us need to get a grasp of the plan of the Bible from creation to Christ. And so tonight is Lesson 19, Isaac's Sons, Esau and Jacob, and Jacob's son Joseph. So we continue through the book of Genesis. And uh, if you want more videos like this, subscribe to our channel, Calvary Baptist of Clintwood. And uh, you can, every Tuesday we try to bring out John's videos. And so anybody out there, we would invite you to follow John and to uh, learn what he's teaching here, which is very important to the faith. So John, come on up here. Lesson 19, Isaac's sons, Esau and Jacob, and Jacob's son, Joseph. Today's lesson will briefly touch on the most important events on, in the lives of Abraham's descendants as they are recorded in the last 26 chapters of Genesis. Our story begins in Canaan, but it will close with Abraham's descendants living in <coughs> Egypt. Let's read in Genesis 25, 19 and 20. And these are the generations of Isaac. Abraham's son, Abraham begat Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Pandarum, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. Rebekah, Isaac's wife, was born in the land where Abraham had lived before the Lord led him to Canaan. God had spread, spared Isaac's life. God had promised Abraham that through Isaac would come many descendants, including the deliverer. Let's read Genesis 25, verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And verse 24 through 26. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red, all over, like an hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. And after that came out his brother, came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. And let's read 25, verse 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. Esau was a skillful hunter. He spent his time tracking and killing wild animals out in the field. The promises concerning the deliverer would have ordinarily been passed on to Esau. He was Isaac's firstborn child. The, the deliverer from God would have been one of Esau's descendants. But Esau was not interested in the promises of God. He did not trust in God like Abraham and Isaac did. Let's read Hebrews 12, 16. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Esau was like Cain. He did not see that he was a sinner. He did not see that he needed to be accepted by God. As we read about Esau, we will see that he went his own way and lived only for the things of this world. These were more important to him than the things of which God wanted to give him and to teach him. Let's read the rest of the verse of Genesis 25, 27. It says, And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. Jacob lived quietly in his tent and kept sheep and cattle. In contrast to Esau, Jacob was a believing man 
like Abraham and Isaac. Jacob admitted that he was a sinner and needed God to send the deliverer, and he was very interested in God's promises. Each one of us needs to ask, am I turning away from God's truth and following my own way like Cain and Esau? Or am I like Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who admitted their sin and trusted in God to provide the deliverer? Because of the great deliverance differences between Esau and Jacob, problems between the two brothers increased to the point that Esau threatened to kill Jacob. Therefore, Jacob left his family and mother's home and began the long trek back to Mesopotamia, the land from which his grandfather, Abraham, had come. Let's read Genesis 28, verse 10. Genesis 28, verse 10. It says, And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. It was a long way from Canaan to Mesopotamia. So, on his way, Jacob had to sleep out in the mountains. Let's read Genesis 28, 11. It says, And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night. Because the sun was set, and he took the stones of that place and put them for his pillows, and lay down in that, play, in that place to sleep. One night, as Jacob slept, God gave him a dream. Occasionally, during those times, God would speak to people through dreams. But now that his word is completed, he speaks to us through the Bible. Let's read the next verse, verse 12. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up, upon, up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Through this dream, God was showing Jacob that the coming deliverer would bridge the gap between man and God. God is the only one who can make a way for us to come to him. Let's read John 14, 6. John chapter 14, verse 6. It says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let's read another one. 1 Timothy 2, 5. 1 Timothy 2.5 For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Even if a person were to do many, many good deeds and try to please God, his efforts would still not bridge the gap caused by sin. This reminds us that, in the beginning, Adam and Eve were in oneness with God. God walked with Adam and Eve. They were friends with God, but they disobeyed God. They and all of their descendants, including you and me, were separated from God. The stairway or the way to God had been removed. There was no way that people could come back to God and be in fellowship with Him unless God made a way. But God promised the Deliverer who would destroy Satan and reconcile man to God, the Deliverer, would be like the stairway which Jacob saw reaching from earth to heaven. Through the Deliverer, people would once again be able to be in with oneness with God. Even though all people have been separated from God because of Satan's lies and Adam's disobedience to God, God planned to send the Deliverer who would make it possible for God and man to be reconciled and reunited. Jacob was a sinner, just like us. God graciously showed Jacob that there is only one way to God. God was also showing Jacob that blessings could only come from God himself and that Jacob must put his trust in God, not in his own ability to manipulate the circumstances. 
Let's read Genesis 28, 13 through 15. Genesis 28, 13 through 15. It says, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in the all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee, until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. God was continuing to work out his plan to send the Deliverer. Many years had passed since God gave the first promise of the Deliverer in the Garden of Eden. Abraham, whom God had called to be the forefather of the Deliverer, was now dead. But God had not forgotten his plan. God promised Jacob that, del that the Deliverer would be one of his descendants. Jacob knew for certain that the promise, promises given to his grandfather Abraham and his father Isaac now belonged to him. Let's read Genesis 29.1. And Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. Many years later, Jacob returned to Canaan after this. In all Jacob had 12 sons. God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Let's read Genesis 32, 28. Genesis 32, 28. It says, And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God, and with men, and has prevailed. The land of Canaan, or the promised land, is still called by his name. When jo Joseph's brother, let's read uh, Genesis 37, 1 through 3. Genesis 37, 1 through 3. It says, And Jacob dwelt in the land of wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpha, his father's wives. And Joseph, sent, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now... Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. When Joseph's brothers did things which were wrong, Joseph told his father, Jacob. Let's read verse 4. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Because Joseph was his father's favorite son, all of his older brothers hated him. The reason why people get angry and hate one another is that everyone has been born separated from God and everyone's heart is evil. Do you have anger, hatred, and evil things in your heart and mind sometimes? All of us were born separated from God and there is no way we can change ourselves. We do these sinful, evil things because we were born sinners just like our father, Adam. Now let's read verse 5 through 11. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Hear, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheave arose, and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about. 
and made obeisance to my sheath. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obedience to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, and his father observed the saying. God knew exactly what was going to happen to Joseph's family. Joseph could not see his future. He didn't know how his dreams would be fulfilled. But God made it clear that Joseph would become the leader and ruler over the family. The future is all known to God. Let's read Isaiah 46, 10. Isaiah 46, verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Let's read Genesis 37, 12 through 14. Back in our text. Genesis 37, 12 through 14 says, And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren free feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whither it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren, and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh, come now therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him. And he and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Now let's read verse 24. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And verse 25 through 28. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites from, came from Gilead with their camels bearing Spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. And let's read thirty-nine, chapter 39, verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him off of the hands of the Ishmaelites which had brought him down thither. 
Joseph, the one whom God had promised would become a leader, was now a slave in Egypt, separated from his family and his homeland. But God carries to but God carries to completion every promise he makes. God knows the future. He knew Joseph's future, and he knows your future. In the next lesson, we will continue the story of God's dealings in Joseph's life. All right. Joseph is a slave in Egypt. Where is he going to end up? Is God's word true? Does God keep his promises? Next time we'll find out. Thank you, John.